pay for it to have to take deep roots to search for the, for the water a little bit. So keep that in mind as well. If you see a little stress, that's not always a bad thing. Right, Chris? Um, we're going to be looking at the run times. We're going to be talking a little bit about how to get smarter with our water. And those are discussions that we will have with your um, property manager, Chuck, as well as your landscape committee as we get more familiar with your association and the water. Those are part of the discussions that will happen, in case you were wondering. Goals. We have some goals. We have a lot of goals because we had a 30, 60, 90 day meeting amongst ourselves. But this is just some of the highlights. You know, we have a lot of turf concerns that we see every day and it's a challenge for us. Uh, we knew that stepping into the community. Now we've had to really learn on how we can slowly um, do our best on each area. So we have just fertilized and we have treated for turf weeds since we've arrived on the property. You'll notice some of that yellowing. Just keep in mind that yellowing is normal. When you start spraying weeds or treating for weeds, it will yellow out. So it's going to look bad before it looks good. If you have a concern, if you see something that is a little out of the ordinary or really bad, please submit a work order and we'll tell you how to do that a little later. But we do, you, you guys have a lot more eyes than we do out here. So we do want to know if there's a concern that we may have missed. But our goal is to try to treat all those areas and make sure that we are helping you achieve your goals. Um, working on the bed weeds and cleaning up from our past. So the reality of it is we have a lot of weeds, right? Some of, those, some of the homes are going through more than others and you can see it. We obviously are noticing that and David is the one that created this for me, by the way. Um, so that is something that we're, we are attending to um, each day and hopefully you'll see a big difference and you know if, you, if we get the opportunity to or you have questions that David can answer he's more than happy to tell you what his schedule is on that um, as we mentioned before we're going to adjust the irrigation for proper water that has been a real big issue for Chris and he's working on that every day um, and then coaching the team we know there's always coaching there has been some areas that we could do better um, you know with our team so when they take out a new community everybody's a little bit excited and maybe going a little bit too fast or working a little bit too hard on some areas or doing things that they shouldn't be doing um, not uh, so we just have to coach them basically I'll leave it at that and I'm sure that if you've experienced some of that you understand and again give us a little grace as we get to know your community and, and understand the ins and outs <laughs> and I think I'm going to if I'm not mistaken pass it on to Pat Patty right Patty we're going to talk about customer care. Is that good for you? Sure. All right, so um, we're going, Patty and Amber, pa Amber runs the entire customer care department. Patty just works on my end to do these meetings because she goes all over the state and Amber can't do that. You're lucky because Amber's right here in Fort Myers and our customer service department or customer care team is right here in our Fort Myers branch. We have six, four. So close, but not really. Four full-time customer care department members, and they'll tell you more about how the customer service and work order system works. Thank you. Nick is going to work on getting our website to pop up. But while he's doing that, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our customer care portal. Oh, I have Excuse something me. on there that if that doesn't work, I can. Okay. So our customer care portal is uh, completely owned by Juniper. We took uh, several people from our team. Um, we have a couple of property managers on our team, myself being one, I just gave it up a long time ago and decided to come work for Juniper. But we took the experience of our property managers to create this customer service portal that we are going to discuss with you today. We wanted to create a portal, excuse me, a portal, <laughs> a portable portal. It is portable because it's going to go on those time suckers that we all have that I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that later. But we wanted to create a portal that would be easy for you as owners to speak via email, via ticket system, directly to your account manager, your branch managers, your irrigation managers, as well as a system that would help our property managers communicate and see what's going on in the community, see what's happening, any concerns 
that the homeowners are having because as Chuck will hopefully agree with me, two biggest things, landscaping and gates, right? right. <laughs> so we're, we want to make sure that Chuck is comfortable with the landscaping and that as well as you as our clients are comfortable with the landscaping. We don't have, we, unless somebody can help us that's tech savvy that's here today, I can't get the internet to work outside of me being able to pull this up, which is just something I have there, Patty. But I do not have, um, I couldn't get the internet to come up. Does anybody here? Welcome to our Put it on sale. You, you know what? I can improvise. I can improvise. I can. I mean, I can put that back up, which is just an uh, example of what you had. It was working earlier, but it's not working now. Okay. That's okay. Well, that's all right. Oh, wait. Add internet to that list. Gates, lens. That's okay. We can try to improvise a little bit. At least we can show you. I mean, I can have an example on the screen. Yeah, if you'll just pull that up, Nick. And then how many of you do have your cell phones with you today? Throw them away. Yes. Life on cell off. Um, so if you could, if you would like to, follow me on your cell phones. If there is good internet in here, I'm not sure if there is. We go to a lot of communities where it's not. But if you wanted to get on your phone and follow me along, I'm going to try to be extremely specific as we go along. But if you go to junipercares.com, can you do it on my phone? Did everybody get to junipercares.com? Yeah. All right. In the top right-hand corner, there should be an orange square that says Juniper Sink. It's in the middle. Do you know how to do it? Uh, this is actually the Oh, hold on to that for a second because we might have somebody who can help us. I will say this. Can everybody huh? hear me? We video. will have an, a tutorial that's going to be sent to you See if and you can a letter that internet. explains the everything the only thing on how to do uh, that. Uh, we just were hoping to be able to do that. This was part of our presentation today because it would be nice. So it'll be separate. We don't go on our Sandoval portal. So, we can. so the, the question is the Sandoval. We will set up a link. Right. So the question was, will this link be on your Sandoval portal? And it will be. You can do it either way. It is, it is actually not an app. We made a decision not to do an app because, as we all know, apps are continuously being updated. And so to ensure everyone was working off the exact same system all the time, we left it as just a website. And then obviously you can create a shortcut on your phone for it. For anybody who needs help creating that shortcut, I'm more than willing to do that for you. Uh, let's see here. And we can always have a day when Amber or her team can come out and bring a computer and help everybody get signed in if we needed to. But we, you don't have to just use the website. You can use the right. I'm going to go over all that. You're, are you are you doing my presentation for me? I know. Okay. So did, while we're doing this, did everyone click on Juniper Sync? Yes. All right. So you should come up with a. I need to create a profile. So if you click on that, you're just going to go through the steps. And if you're here and you want to do it, you're more than welcome to do it. It's going to ask for first, last names. It's going to ask for your address here at Sandoval. Okay. It's going to ask for a phone number. Now there are a place for two phone numbers. One, you know, that old landline that I don't know if anybody even has anymore. But it is required that you fill that out. So if you just want to put your cell phone in twice, you can certainly do that. Yes, ma'am. I have some questions. Do you guys call the numbers? Oh, yeah. Put ourselves in that speaking number, and a lot of people around here Amber, have you called a Canadian number back? We have before, and we have that Yes, she can do that. Good. That's a check off your box right there. All right, so once you create that profile, it is going to also ask you for an email address. It is imperative that you put that email address in because that is how we're going to communicate with you. Once you put in your first ticket, we're going to go over that. You're going to get notification via email or via text. We're going to get to that later. But that's how you're going to get these notifications is in an email. If you don't have an email address, you can't work through the system. Look at there. 
Can Amber sit there? Okay, so she just needs to follow it up there? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Kennedy. Kennedy. Tar Hill. Carolina Fred. I was just about to say your 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 heels, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, the heels, right? Okay. All right. So can you click no, I need to create one. And Amber is going to real quick create a phony one here. This is an important step. Please make sure you pick Sandoval. If you do not pick Sandoval, your profile goes out into nowhere land and we're not going to ever get your ticket request. I'm going to put in that house number, your street name. We all know that we're here, but uh, we ask that you fill that completely out. And this is the area, like I mentioned, that has two phone numbers. Both of those squares are required to be completed, even though there's a star only next to one of them. We're working on fixing that glitch. Now, here's another area where we want you to to look at, one of these areas has to be checked. You can either get email notifications, or you can get text messages, or you can get both. So one of these or both of them have to be checked. The last step is you're gonna put in your email. That password is something that you can make up. It needs to be at least six characters, and it does not need all of the weird symbols and numbers and capitalizations that you always have to do. It is very important that you put one in that you can remember. We cannot retrieve your password. If you forget your password, we can certainly create a new one for you, but we cannot retrieve the one that you started with. Yes. We do prefer one account per household, but we also understand that some pe that uh, people living in the household may have a different email address and may want to do their own. But we do prefer one account per household. It just makes it a little easier. My angle is horrible. She's having to actually read as she's typing. All right. Okay, so now what we're done, you've created your profile. So we're going to create our first ticket. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a ticket, especially if you have, like I said, these phones that we always have with us. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. All right, so you're logged in. I'm sorry. Okay, so what's going to happen is once you log in, your community announcements are going to pop up. And I love to say this. Does everybody remember my name? It's Patty. Because you're going to want to be really frustrated with Patty because these announcements are going to come up in your face all the time. And every time you make a move, you have to click out of them. We do that purposefully. We really, really, really want you to read the announcements because we are hoping that maybe one of your questions that you have can, will be answered in those announcements. Those community announcements are going to include the weekly updates that your account manager does. So if you wanted to know perhaps maybe you were scheduled last week for a trim and that didn't happen, you should be able to go into his updates and he would be able to, to know where he's at, okay? So once you're done with those announcements, you're, um, she's already done it, but you can click, there's a green X in the top right hand corner. You click out of that, and what does it do? It brings you right back to the top, which is the announcements. So you're just gonna go all the way down. All right, so here's your dashboard. This is your personal dashboard. It's gonna show you all of your current tickets as well as all of your closed tickets. Now before we create those tickets, we're gonna go real quick across the top there and just kind of go over what each one of our areas do. So that first area, like I said, is your ticket summary. If you see that there's an orange, green, blue, yellow, and gray, your orange tickets are your active service requests. Your green tickets are your active enhancement requests. We are 
and would love to do enhancements for you. You still need to go through your association process, which is, is that your ARB, ARC? ARC. ARC, all right, which is still your ARC, but we are more than happy to provide you with a proposal. We're gonna skip the blue and come back to that. Your, that awful yellow color is an information request. Say you just wanna know when you're going to be pruned and you have gone through the announcements and it's just not there. You can do a simple information request and Amber's team should be able to answer that for you very quickly. And if she can't, she reaches out to your manager, she gets the answers so we can answer those quickly. The gray, like I said, is going to be any closed tickets that you have. So we'll go back up to the blue. The blue is damaged tickets. We don't really like to talk about that. We, are, we try very hard not to create any damage, uh, but we're not, we're not perfect, so there, there's going to be a possibility that you would need to create that ticket, and that's what the blue is for. These are color-coded so your managers can easily see what type of tickets they have in the system. Just a quick glance of what kind of tickets are going on in the system. Your next area, which is your active request, basically, there's those announcements again, see? Basically, you don't have, this profile does not have any active requests because we just haven't created one. The next area is going to be your community maps. That is, we were trying to get some loaded just with the internet, we couldn't get it done, but you do have maps and they're gonna show where they are at certain times in the community, when your prune is, when your weeding is, when you should be mowed. So that's gonna be a great place for you to go to. And you should be able to take those community maps and compare it to the weekly updates that are being provided to show where you are in the next, where, where, where you're gonna be in the next cycle, okay? The next area is our knowledge base. Juniper has created a knowledge base. It is full of seasonal newsletters that Juniper has created, and we also use the University of Florida, and we have downloaded a ton of articles. If you want to just one day, just read about something. You could, if you want to read about, um, give me something, guys. Chinch bug. And you hit search. And if you go down here, it's tur she is quick. Basically what it is, it's managing southern chinch bug. Oh, thank you. And then if you view the PDF, it's going to give you a whole article from the University of Florida on chinch bug. So you can learn to your heart's desire there. If you do search for something and it's not in our knowledge base, if you let the customer care team know, we can certainly look into getting that on our knowledge base. We're always looking to improve that. The next area is a new request, which we're going to come. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a ticket. Okay, let's create a service request, Amber. Is that where we're at? All right, so basically you're gonna have a category. Can you click on the category so they can see that there's a couple different ones? Shrub, trees, turf, irrigation, you'll be able to pick what category that is. Let's pick shrub. And then let's do that pest disease, but you have pest disease, trip request, replacement, other, if none of those fit. Now the next thing that you're gonna run into is this house plan. This is not your house plan. It's nothing specific. All we're looking for here is front, back, right, or left. Just helps our team go there quicker so we can try to process that. Once you click on where the area is, it does turn a dark orange, as Amber is showing you. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is uploading an image. Michelle, do you have pictures on your computer? Okay, so we're going to show you how easy it is. You're just going to upload an image. So it's going to basically, if you're on your phone, it's going to take you to your photos. If you're on your computers, it's going to take you to all of your pictures. Oh, look at there. Definitely do that one. Okay, there is a note there that says tickets without a photo may take 7 to 10 days to resolve. We highly encourage photos. 
That's why we've made it so easy to upload a photo. Um, to, to tell a quick story, the owner of our company originally wanted us to make it mandatory. They had to submit a picture if they want to submit a ticket. So myself and Amber and the customer care team got pictures of dogs and cats and grandkids, all kinds of things. So we just decided, you know what? We can take it away, but it may take longer to work through your ticket. For example, if you think that your shrub has pests and you take a picture of it, we may be able to take a look at it and decide that it's not pests, it needs something else, or he can see what type of pest it is and go ahead and order what needs to be done for it. And your ticket is done before he even had to go out and take a look at it. So it does help. And then the next part is going to be a brief, and I use that really, really strongly, a brief description of what your concern is. It has a max character limit of 280. That is, again, done purposefully. Um, lots of War and Peace novels in our ticket system, and it just drags it down. It slows down the process. So just a brief description. So Amber's going to write, shrubs in front and side yard have pests. And then she's going to hit save. Now this system is live. So the moment you've created that ticket, your managers have received notification that there is a ticket in the system. It's always live. So if you go back, now you're in your active request and you can see that ticket. Now, Amber, if you could click on that for me. If you forgot to say something or you originally didn't have a picture, so you wanna upload a picture now, you can go in and you can do it all again. You're just gonna click on that plus button. You can upload another image. You can say something more, save it, and again, they're gonna get notified that the ticket has a response on it. Now, once the responses start going back and forth, they're just going to be right there under replies. So you're gonna be able to see the entire conversation between yourself and whichever, whichever manager you're uh, conversing with. Now again, this is the way they're gonna contact you, so please make sure that you are reading those replies because sometimes we do come back, my ticket's not been touched, we're just not looking in the right area, that's gonna be in the reply area. It won't be in an email like that Earth used to do. So what'll happen is, the question is will it be in an email? What'll happen is you're going to get a ticket notification that there is a reply to your ticket. It'll be in an email, or if you signed up for text messages, it'll be in that text message. Now, one of the things that I do wanna mention, because I know a lot of us are a little hesitant to click, click on links that you get in emails or text messages, our links are safe. So you're gonna click on that link, and depending on how you have your own login set up, you'll either go directly into your profile or you'll have to log in. But either way, once you do that, you're gonna be able to look in that ticket and see any responses that have come through from the manager. Now we took a long time to kind of go through each step, but I, you can create a ticket in under 60 seconds. It's super fast once you get in there, once you get started, it's going to be completely easy to figure that out. Now. The managers should be responding to that email within two business days, not completing it, okay? Just acknowledging that it's there, okay? Keep in mind, if you put a ticket in Friday at four, that doesn't mean Saturday and Sunday. So it's probably gonna be Tuesday before you get that confirmation that we've received your ticket. So just keep that in mind. Now, the ticket system is for your home only, okay? We know sometimes we have some neighbors in the community that are watching others' homes. This profile is for your home only. If you put tickets in for another address, it does, again, slow down the process because what's gonna happen is they're gonna go to your address because it's your address that pops up. So if you do have a concern with a neighbor, you can always call the customer care uh, team and they can help you or you can work with your community manager. Now, this system is also not for common area requests. Please do not put a common area request 
in your house profile. If you do have a common area of concern, and Amber, I apologize in advance if you don't know this, but I was just told, um, you can call the customer care team. They're gonna create a common area profile and they will put in that common area profile ticket for you. Please do not use your own personal profile for that. The last thing that I wanna to talk to you about is give a gold star. Yes, ma'am, sorry. So there may be times where your crew comes to my house mm -hmm. and they see something that needs to happen and they would create a ticket? No, ma'am. No. No. Um, I don't know what happens if your crew sees something. That would be a question for your operations team. Yeah, they'll go, they'll talk to you about it and you can take care of it. But that also brings up a great point. Please do not rely on the gentlemen, the boots on the ground that are there doing it. If you feel like, well, I'm just going to leave it because they'll see it, put in a ticket. You know, those guys, those guys and girls that are out there, they have specific jobs that they're required to do and get through the day. And even if you say something to them, um, they might forget it. And there's also possibly a language barrier. So even though you're saying something to them and they're telling you yes, they most likely did not understand you. So please make sure that you're working through the system. And yeah. what color are the vests that they can talk to? Green, green vests or foreman. So if, you, if there's an emergency and you had to talk to somebody, green means go. Uh, orange is just labor, guys. They're not going to understand you. Make sense? And that also brings up another good point. This system is not for emergencies. If you have an emergency, please call our customer care team and, and, and do that, okay? Yes, ma'am. I would just like to say that you just started last week and <clears throat> prior to you starting a few weeks before, I had put in some new sod. So when I heard your mowers, <laughs> I ran out there <laughs> um, because I didn't want them touching the new sod. And yeah, the orange shirt guys were very polite, but before I know it, somebody was knocking at my door um, to tell me what was going on and to understand and apologize because they had already walked on it. <laughs> talk about um, thank you for sharing that with us and let's, let's talk a little bit about an emergency um, an emergency is not a broken sprinkler head and if I'm saying this wrong you guys can jump in a broken sprinkler head you can certainly use the system for that because the irrigation will turn off in 15 to 20 minutes so that will get repaired it's a mainline break or a broken valve right am I saying that step, step, valve. step valve the whole system's not coming off after a few hours or something, if we got a problem. But, but back to that few hours, please do not wait until Friday at 4 to say that your irrigation's been running all day and has not turned off because it's really hard to get the teams back out here at Friday at 4. So just what if it happens after 4, out on Friday? That, but that is your management company, Chuck. You would have to uh, kind of give us a hint on how they handle after hours because your management company has access to... Um, your manager's cell phone numbers yeah. in the event of an emergency. Do you have an after hour number? Is that yeah. that? Okay, so you would contact your after hour management company and then they would contact us. The reason that we do that, just as a heads up, because um, I will tell you as a property manager, at first I didn't like it, but after hour services cost money. At the end of the day, they do. True statement? <coughs> Unless it's something that we have done. Oh, yeah. So we just want to make sure that we are going through all of the proper channels to get those types of emergencies completed in the, in the fastest way. May I ask you something? Sure. I had some of your people come out today in a van. The woman was covered up. I couldn't see her face. It was another gentleman that was looking at the box. Yes, ma'am. So the front of my door is done. Mm -hmm. I try to get her because I don't know your system yet, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm here. I said, I think I have chinch bugs because the picture you showed up here a little bit ago looked exactly like it. So I was trying to tell her because I had it. I have it just about every year, right? She's we're on top of it, you know. Is that a true statement? <coughs> I mean, I, do, I need to go in and fill out a form because she's telling me she's aware. So I may have a little bit of a different opinion than the operations because as 
a property manager and customer care, I would tell you to put in a ticket. Yeah, okay. absolutely, 100%. <laughs> Just put in a ticket. Because when she told me that, I'm like, Brand new, right? And she may be saying, listen, we know there are certain areas, and that's not to say she doesn't, and that, right. that, we, and that Chris and his team are not aware of it, and we're right. working with, with Dave and, and all of that. But I would still, even for my own right. just kind of confirmation, I'd put in a ticket so you can start the conversation. All right, this is up and running now, or no? So it is officially live on Monday, okay. but um, Kyle has said that we could go ahead and leave this open so you could go in and create profiles keep in mind if you do create tickets this week it is possible they won't get looked at until next week when the official start date is true we're going to try our best. we're going to try our best this week but the official start date is monday yes ma'am okay my question is it is my understanding that you guys went around the community with a drone yeah well, we're, we're going to get to that part yeah, uh, yeah we do have a drone mapping. So if I could just get um, through the last section of the customer care team and then take questions on the actual system, and then we'll move to drone mapping and operations questions. Okay? You have a question on the system? I have a question. So the only way to create a ticket is through your this system here. So There's we no, other way. That's, no, that's not true. We recognize that not everybody wants to get on a computer. We, we recognize that. So Amber and her team are more than happy to create those tickets for you. We have a customer care phone number. We also have a customer care email. Keep in mind, if you want to stay involved in the ticket process, you will still have to give us all of your information, including an email address. Um, but we can certainly create that ticket for you. If you do not have an email address, you just do not want to have one, our best advice is to, once you create the ticket, you're going to have to give it a few days, call into customer care, they can look your ticket up, and kind of see where you're at in the process. But yes, there are three different ways. Your own computer or phone, a phone number, or an email. Okay? Yes, sir. Covered a lot of area here, a lot of information. Is there a YouTube video yes. that does all of this? Because obviously not everybody's represented. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly going to go home with my wife and say, "What do we do?" And I'm going to say, "I have no idea." Yeah, no idea. <laughs> no idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. So no, we actually have a YouTube video on how to create a ticket in 60 seconds, and then we also have. Um, a, a tutorial uh, that's a PowerPoint that you can simply take your time and look through that. Amber can send both of those to uh, your community manager and then they can disperse as necessary. Absolutely, that's there. Yes, ma'am. You indicated that um, when you put in a ticket, it goes to the managers. Uh, okay, does it go to a specific manager or how do they know which manager is right here. Yeah. If I put in something about an irrigation problem, it actually is going to go to both of them, your irrigation manager and your account manager. And internally, we work out who it's for. But it goes to both of them. Oh, so if it's, if it's, so if it's a ticket, correct. So if it's a ticket and um, David looks at it and it's irrigation, he knows Chris has it. He knows Chris has it. Because they're both getting notification of all of the tickets. Chris, I don't know how he does it. But Chris gets notified for every ticket that is put in the system for his entire region, which is Fort Myers. So Chris is well versed in looking at tickets. So, okay. All right, so I want to go through one of my favorite parts of this system. It's something that I'm extremely passionate about. Um, this is give a gold star. Giving a gold star is for our team on the ground, the boots on the ground, the guys and the gals that are actually doing the work out here. Not to say none of these guys do it, because they do. I've seen them all do it. But this is for the guys that, and gals that are here every single day doing the work. If you see somebody going that extra mile, doing such a great job, they did something for you, please go in and give them a gold star. Now, if you don't know their name, if there's a language barrier, there's going to be an opportunity in the description that you can just kind of Give us the day, the time, what they did for you, and these guys can figure out who it was. And then what happens is um, every morning they do safety meetings, and the team is recognized in front of their peers, which we believe that is a huge morale booster. 
and they're, so they're recognized and they're given some juniper swag. Okay, so please take the opportunity and the time to do that if you could. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we're using the system that we've already signed into under our own profile. Uh -huh. Yet you're asking me to put that information in again. Because once you go into give a gold star, we have two different customers. We have two different systems that can be used <clears throat> for work tickets. Some communities use Juniper Sync, other communities do not. Once you click on Give a Gold Star, it opens up into internally both of our systems, so you have to put that information in again. It's a little bit of a different system there. Yeah, but if you want us to use it, you could make it easier. We are definitely working on improving. We are, that's why it's so great that Juniper owns this system. We are continuously improving it. And thank you for your comment. We can certainly take that back to the, uh, the guys behind the scene that, that do it all. Now, if you wanted to give Kyle, Dave, or Chris any type of yahoos, you could uh, go onto Google and do a Google review. That is how these guys get recognized. So, give a gold star is for the guys and the gals, boots on the ground. Google reviews are for your management. So, with that said, question on the system. Yes, sir. Is that gold star retroactive? Because I had sure. great, great service like 10 days ago. Absolutely. We would love for you to do that. Thank you. We would really appreciate that. All right. Yes, ma'am. No, I didn't have it on the system. Oh, okay. Any questions on the actual system, and then I'm going to turn it over to the guys who really know what they're talking about. Yes, ma'am. How do you know if the ticket's been finished? So, <clears throat> you are going to get a notification every single time that ticket is touched, okay? We cannot close a ticket without a comment stating what we did to complete the ticket. So if you had an irrigation head that was broken, if Chris's team fix it, they can't fix it or repairs it, they cannot just go in and close it. They have to go in, make a comment, then they close it and you're gonna get notified that your ticket was closed. You're gonna be able to go into the system and see what they did for that ticket. Okay? All right, operations and mapping. All right, thank you, Patty. Um, All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the drone mapping that we did, and I know there was a question on this. So anybody can go on Google Earth, right, and take imagery or see – oh, I want to step in front of the camera, so I'm going to go back this way. And, you know, but, but Google Earth, once you kind of scroll in, it gets a little blurry. You can't really see fine details and stuff like that. So what we've done is we have taken a drone and we flew the entire community, and it takes thousands and thousands of pictures as it goes back and forth across the entire community, right? And then it takes those pictures and it stitches them together to give this, this 4K high def imagery, all right? And this allows us with this program to go through and monitor all of the areas throughout the community, turf conditions. Uh, we can see, and we can zoom right in and see an irrigation control valve box in your backyard, okay, if it's exposed. Uh, we can identify the trees, the palms, uh, a lot of different details within the landscape, right? But the really unique part about having this drone in imagery is when we start off with the community, before we started, we flew it, right? This gives us the ability to go through and identify areas of concerns. If we have areas of turf that are not performing well, if we have some palms that are maybe looking a little chlorotic or not as healthy, we can identify those. We can drop a pin on them. The field team can actually walk with their phones and this drone mapping and they can drop pins wherever they're at, okay? Then they can go back at a later date and they can create reports off of this. And if there is, you know, sod concerns or damages or things like that, we can identify those in the, in the report and then we can provide proposals based off of that. Uh, we can measure right from this square footage of the area. We can highlight and color it right from here. We can drop a pin or color on the, um, on the palms or the trees. The other unique part about this program is, is that um, it has plant healthcare features. So you go into plant healthcare uh, and then we can select, you'll have to go back for the map detail. 
So then you can go into the plant health care and just highlight plant health care. Yeah, don't click on the, no, don't click on the, there. And so what this does is it reflects, right? It reflects the colors, it reflects green. Green is good, right? Red, obviously, is going to, a lot of times is the, is the rooftops, right? Concrete surfaces, things like that, because those are the hottest points. But if we see some of that in the turf areas, right, throughout the community, and we see different shades of it, right, we understand that this could be a dry area. This tells us that maybe we're not getting enough irrigation, or maybe there's a problem with the irrigation. And we could go through the entire community, and we could put layers of this throughout every home or in the common areas and identify areas where we could be having a concern. So say we're boots on the ground looking at an area that has concerns with the turf. And we've fertilized it, and we've mowed, and we've treated, and we just can't seem to get it to bounce back. We can go back to this imagery, and we can look at the plant healthcare feature and say, okay, maybe we need to add an irrigation head. It's just still very dry. Or maybe it's too wet. Maybe it's, it's, it's an area that's very saturated, and there's a lot of moisture. It's low-lying. It helps us develop plans, right? Uh, we can actually even go as far as if you take the healthcare, the plant healthcare feature off, we can go as far as identifying areas and measuring uh, heights of trees, heights of plants, different things like that right from here. This also gives us an elevation feature, right? Say we have an area uh, that is uh, between a home that's holding a lot of water, right? We can look at the elevation and come up with a plan. We're not going to do... You know, we're not going to look at it and say, oh, it's just wet there because, you know, that's the way it's designed to be, right? Maybe it is, but we can look at the elevation and see, do we have a drainage issue here? Maybe we have a low-lying area. Maybe it's too high. Maybe it's not holding water because it's just running off. So we can see the elevation points throughout the entire, and forgive me because the, the map's not loading all the way because the internet's a little slow, but... Um, you can zoom in and we can identify these areas and say, hey, we have low-lying areas or we have a drainage issue or a concern. And before we throw good money after bad, now we understand the root cause, right? Now we understand what we have to do. Maybe we need to come in and we have to put some extra soil. Maybe we recommend drainage. Maybe it is an irrigation, as Michelle said earlier, there's too many, too many heads between the homes and we have to go through and cap off every other head to eliminate the amount of watering that's going on between the homes. This will give us some idea of what the property is facing and what we're seeing from literally a bird's eye view. The other best part about this feature and what we provide with our contract is this gets done quarterly. So we're gonna come in quarterly and we're gonna fly to the community, what? And then we can take it, and we don't have it here to show because we haven't done a second drone feature uh, or flight just yet, but we could do a side-by-side -side comparison. And we could say, this is what it looked like January 1, and this is what it looks like June 1, right? And we could see, have we improved or has it gotten worse? And it's a, not only a way to identify areas and concerns, but a way for your board and your management team and your landscape committee to kind of measure how we're doing. <laughs> Are we, are we fixing the areas we said we were gonna fix? Are we putting the everything down that we said we were gonna do when we, when we initially signed up? And, and or our weekly updates. Maybe we've identified an area. Are we taking care of it? So you can do a side-by-side -side comparison and we'll do that every quarter. Once we get through an entire year, now you can do a side-by-side -side comparison through the year, year over year. How was it last January? How is it January of 2025? And that's how we can make sure that we are doing everything we can to, to make the landscape look lush and beautiful throughout the entire community. So that's one great feature that we have with the drone. Uh, it also helps, uh, knock on wood, we get a hurricane that comes through again, right? We can identify and locate trees. Here's where they were at in January of 24. If we get a hurricane that comes in and suddenly a tree's missing, well, that, there used to be a tree there. What type of tree was it? It helps with that kind of thing. Um, it also helps Chuck if you have a dirty roof. You can see that. <laughs> so <laughs> now he doesn't have to go out on that golf cart and look anymore. He's got a bird's eye view of it all. So just keep your roof clean. Uh, but yeah, this is it's a great it's a great feature. Um, it's, we're we're really excited, really proud of this. 
Uh, it's something that we've been using for many years. Obviously, it upgrades. Bless you. Obviously, it upgrades. God bless you. One more time and you're done. Uh, it, it, as you go on, um, uh, you know, we'll upgrade the imagery. We're in 4K, high def now. So we have to refly some areas that we had in the uh, with some of our older ones. We're actually in the process of upgrading our drones. God bless you. We're actually in the process of upgrading our drones. Uh, we're going to go to a little bit of a bigger feature. Um, they provide a little bit more infrared and just different things to give us a little bit more detail. But uh, these are this is one of the tools that we'll be continue to use throughout uh, our time here in, in Sandoval. So, yes, somebody had a question on it. Okay. You're going to go back 90 days from now or 120 days from now? Correct. Okay, because I have an area in the back of my home, mm -hmm. and I guess you must have seen it, and you're, you're watching it, right? Or are you assume that, or no, don't assume that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, yeah. And then you're going to come back around. When, when are you coming back around? So, what, so what, I don't, what, what do you, what, to do what? To, so see if it's getting better. Did you treat it like it's grass? Okay. okay. So. So I don't want to. I don't want to put in uh, put in a work order. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you've gone around with your drone. Mm -hmm. You've identified areas. Right. Okay. And I'm assuming, maybe I shouldn't assume that, that you you're going to treat those areas to Correct. see. And the next quarter to see what you treated it with. Did it make an improvement? Correct. And then you'll reassess it. And say, wait a minute, that's not making it an improvement. Yes. Maybe we have to do this. You'll notify us. Correct. So I shouldn't put a work order or something like that. Wait until next quarter because you've already seen it. I, I wouldn't recommend just waiting until next quarter. It's okay to put in a work order. We can then identify and let you know what we have done. Right? Here's some of the things that we have done. We have fertilized. We have treated herbicides. Uh, we've put herbicides down to treat the weeds. We've uh, done some soil analysis, right? Some soil samples. Now, not every single home didn't get a soil sample. We just take it periodically throughout the neighborhood in both the beds and the turf areas. And we start to identify those areas. But I would not recommend just sitting and waiting okay. for us to redo the drone. I will say, yes, we have done all that. We have taken the drone. We have flown the community. Kyle and his team have driven every inch of this community. Um, uh, up and down every road. They have identified some areas of concern. Is it going to take a little bit of time for some of these areas to bounce back? Yes, it will. But don't wait on submitting a ticket and a work order so at least you have the uh, the knowledge of what we have done okay. to help improve. So as soon as this system is up and running, I can go in yes, work order. Can you come and look at it? Absolutely. And it's, it's Absolutely. on your radar. Correct. You'll, you'll tell me how, what we Absolutely. Have. Yes. Well, 1,200 dots are a lot better than, than six. You know, I mean, you, you guys can help us be those odds in the field, too. If you've got an area of concern and also a picture's worth a thousand words, put it on there, put the okay. word ticket, and Absolutely. we can go straight to that micro level and, and take care of it immediately. Right. Okay, that's where I have a question that the prior um, vendor let the grass go, there's the grass. Crabgrass mm -hmm. is hell. It was like hell yeah. between my house and my neighbors. And it's a very large area. So I know it wasn't your fault, but it's going to be my fault because they neglected it and I have to pay for new stock. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. It doesn't seem fair that, you know, if I would have treated it myself, it wouldn't have ended up that way. Yeah, I agree. I understand. Yeah, and it's not with you. I think it's I, No, I completely understand. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah. Sorry. Well, there's not, there's no not, uh, selective herbicides for those type of invasives you're talking about. We don't know the circumstance behind it, but I know once those those are in, we have to use non-selective materials and eradicate and replace. So they it won't fill itself back in if you boost up. The Unfortunately, unfortunately You'll not. You'll just grow more weeds. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, not. I mean, if you have complete bare spots, now we are taking some um, some approaches to help strengthen the turf that is out there, right? And we'll put down some fertilizers, and in the fertilizers, we also um, always add some d different products, like pre-emergence and just different things to our fertilizers to help with that. Now, it's not gonna eradicate what you have here already. Unfortunately, like Kyle was saying, down here, it's called tropical signal weed. If you're from up north, like we are, 
It's called crabgrass, right? <laughs> crabgrass, you can treat. You can go out there, you can treat crabgrass, right? Down here, unfortunately, it's not. It's called tropical signaling. It's a very subtropical turf. The problem is, is right now, well, we've had a little bit of a wetter winter than normal, right? But typically what happens is because it's so subtropical, when we're getting our everyday rains in the summer, you don't notice it. Your turf is green, right? And everybody's saying, okay, I have beautiful turf. It looks green. It looks good. But the minute that those rains stop and we get that drier weather, what happens is that subtropical turf, that tropical signal wheat, which it is a wheat, starts to turn brown, right? Because it's not getting the everyday rain that it used, it's used to get it. And so it immediately, those are the spots that start to turn brown. And the very first phone call we get is, my irrigation system's not working. Something's wrong. You got to get out of here. Irrigation's not working. My grass is brown. Unfortunately, going back to Michelle's spiel, irrigation can't provide what Mother Nature provided. You can't run your system enough to provide that to the turf, right? So those are the areas you start to see. Now we take that time to identify those areas and we will take some approaches to try to thicken the St. Augustine turf. Unfortunately, with Tropical Signal, it grows at a little bit of a faster rate than what St. Augustine can grow at. So it starts to choke out the good grass. What our goal is, is to strengthen that turf so that it can withstand drought conditions a little bit better. It can keep those invasives from coming in like the Bermudas and the Tropical Signals. So that's our goal is we're going to try to strengthen them. Unfortunately, <clears throat> pardon me, unfortunately, I can't, as much as I would love to do it, I can't rewrite the wrongs of the past. And it, some areas are going to have to be replaced. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to just replace them with some good sod. But we're going to have to come in and actually kill that out, scrape that out really well, and be able to come back in and put new sod down and then kind of restart the process from there. Areas of the yard that are that look dead because they have this weed thing versus the grass that it's supposed to. It is my responsibility to put new sod on that area. Is that what yeah. you're telling me? Yes, you will have to resod that area. And I am I am I paying you to do that, or am I physically doing it myself? Either way, you would prefer. I would prefer you pay me to do it. But if you'd like to do it yourself, you can do that. <laughs> That's, I can't answer that question, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, sir, you had your hand up. I'll, I'll, I'll get, yes, yes, sir. So, I understand that for the grass, it has to be killed and replaced, but the type of southern crabgrass. The tropical signal. Yes. Same. That, that can be killed with pre-emergent. It has there been, like I put some down myself this winter, hopefully it won't come back, but is, you've said you add some to your fertilizer? Well, pre-emergent is not a herbicide, so it's never going to kill it. prevent the germination of the new It seeds. stops the germination right. of the new, correct. But or it helps prevent it. You are saying you're we adding. Do. We do. Add, we add some pre-emergence mixtures into a couple of our fertilizations that we do each year. And that has to be done like at this time of year. It's, we start in the we fall. Sit, we start in the fall, right. So it typically starts in the fall, October, yeah. I think is when we do it. We do it again in February or January. Or January. <laughs> We'll do it again with the with those mixtures of the pre-emergence in there. Pro Vista, yes. So Pro Vista, she asked if we've heard of Pro Vista grass. Pro Vista grass is a um, a, a cultivar of of Saint Augustine. Okay, it does grow at a little bit of a slower pace, has a little bit of a thinner leaf, uh, can be a little bit of a deeper blue green color. Um, unfortunately, and it, and it can handle uh, glyphosate, okay? I'm going to stay away from the R word, but it can handle Roundup, okay? So it can handle that. So you can go out there, and if you have weeds that become present in your turf with the ProVista, technically you can spray at, a, at, a, at the right mixture rate, you can spray Roundup or glyphosate in the turf, and it will not harm the grass, but it will kill the weeds. However, it is very prone to um, 
take all patch and funguses and different things. It does require a lot of water, okay? Contrary to what you may read about it. Just like zoysia, when zoysia first came about <clears throat> 10, 15 years ago in, in Southwest Florida, it was gonna be the grass of up north, right? And this looks like just like up north, requires less water, doesn't get chinch bugs, baloney. It gets it all. So it's all the same, okay? We live in a very subtropical climate <clears throat> that is very, and we're, we're, we're susceptible to a lot of different pests and invasive weeds or invasive uh, weeds in our turf, right? It's just, we have to, if you have a good program of fertilization mixed with your proper IPM services, you can have lush, beautiful turf, right? And I'm not saying that some of these areas may not get a little bit thicker or may not grow back in. It may happen. If you have some larger areas that are that are bald or completely dead, probably not going to happen, right? Um, but some of these areas with some of the practices that we're putting together will start to get a little bit thicker, will start to look a little bit greener and a lot lusher. Uh, it just may not fully replace some of those areas. But I do not, um, I hope nobody in here grows Pro Vista. But I do not recommend it. Yes, ma'am. You said that you sprayed uh, the yards for weeds yes. already. Mm -hmm. How long after you spray that do, will the weeds start turning yellow? Typically what? You can start seeing a little curling in a couple of days. Yeah. Usually about seven days is when you'll start to see max efficacy there. Seven to right. ten days you'll see the best result. And then we usually... We'll follow up again next month before we uh, hit it one more time before we fur before blackout. Well, the reason I ask is my front yard is full of uh, what is that sand dollar weed? I call it sand dollar, dollar weed. weed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's loaded. Yep. So and dollar weed and sedges. Are and it's not bad. turning yellow. Well, first we got to get the climate, whatever the 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 climate conditions controlled. So that's a water weed. Uh, and we got to go and check and make sure, see how much www.juniperpercares.com put us in a work order, take a picture. We'll figure out what those microclimate conditions are that are causing that dollar weed first. And then we'll come back and do a follow up treatment in April. Yeah, because I, I thought if you sprayed the weed killer, you can spray all the weed killer you want, but if it's sitting in water, it's not going to do anything. It's in my front so. yard that goes downhill. And it's sitting right at the top. Yeah. So. It, typically, dollar weed and sedge weeds are water driven. They're water based, which means you either have too much water mm -hmm. or you have a low lying area. Uh, so that's what tri typically drives those type of, of, of weeds to come up. They are very easy to treat, but again, we got to identify the area. Is it too wet? Is it a low lying area? Is there compacted soil underneath there? That's what helps us kind of identify that. And that's what our IPM techs are trained to do. And that's what our managers are out there looking for and, and coming up with different plans. Now, again, it, it's not going to completely go away overnight. As much as I would love to wave uh, my magic wand that I have in the back of my truck uh, I, and just say, you know, hey, be beautiful again. I, I would love to do that for everybody. But unfortunately, it is a little bit of a process. And there are some different things that we have to go through. And there's going to be a little bit of ugliness, right? There's going to be a little bit of aesthetic appeals. I, it, it's not going to go from mediocre to beautiful overnight. We may have to go through a little bit of a transition period, but we are getting there. That is our goal. We are we are moving in that direction. Uh, I can already see it in the common areas coming in here. The grass is a little a lot greener than it was, right? Starting to look a little bit healthier. Yes, you can see some browning. You can see where we've where we sprayed the weeds out and things like that. Some of the areas are going to take a little bit longer than others. High, very high pH levels here in Southwest Florida. Uh, not like up north, you could put some vermiculite down and change the pH level. Not so easy down here. Okay, it's very sandy soil conditions. So there's a lot of different efforts that we have to put in. Yes, ma'am. I have a contract question. <coughs> yes. I noticed on the um, PowerPoint, I didn't see mulching. We usually get one mulching a year with our we don't. One mulching. That's a chuck That's chuck Okay. It's not part of the contract. And then, and, well, it was part of the contract, the last contract. And the other thing is the uh, 
uh, palm trees. We used to get that trimmed once a year. I didn't see that on the contract either. So that, that's, uh, that's going to be handled by, by us. Um, what happened with DTE is that was all under their contract. We took that away from this contract. That's not to say that Juniper won't be asked to give us a quote on the tree <coughs> trimming in the bulk uh, or the common and also the mulch. Uh, it's always it's, been in the contract. But we've removed it from the contract, so it's, it ain't less, it's a savings. It's saving money that way. Because you're paying, you're paying the, the vendor more. And honestly, it's the same guys that, that we hired last so when, no, so then could, when you are going to mulch our area, I'm assuming that you that you will. Yeah. Is that yeah. going to be a special assessment no. for each it's, home? It's included in trees and mulch is included in what you're saying right now. Money. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's, it's just it's, not necessarily. Right. Just not I understand that. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. And it will take place in just like it did this year in the October. We're waiting for after rainy season. Because we don't want to put mulch down and watch it just run down oh, yeah. the street. So in the October time frame, that's when we'll probably do trees and mulch. Okay. I'd normally like to do trees before hurricane season in July, but since we did so much trimming uh, towards the end of last year, we're kind of like out of sync right now. But we're going to trim the palms and oaks are coming up in the commons this year. I understand. Thank you. Yep. Yes, sir. Just a follow-up question. There's a lot of sedge weed that grows along the lake. Do you apply anything there, or do you have to leave that alone? Yeah, we have to leave that alone. I have a question about some palm trees. Okay. Uh, and it might not be you, it might be Chuck, but with the old company that we used, I was told because my palm trees are touching my roof. And I put in so many work orders to have them trimmed, and I was told that if anything is 12 feet high, they won't touch that. So where is the responsibility? What should I do? Yeah, correct. Our contract, we go up to 12 foot. Anything above 12 foot is outside of our contract scope, and you can either wait for the palm tree, do you do the palm trees in the bulk? You can wait for that pruning to occur, or you can contract somebody like us. Uh, Juniper can come out. We do have an arbor division that we can send out um, and trim those trees. Well, I'm concerned because they say the rats will get into your roof if, if your palms are touching it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, if a rat wants to get up into the attic, the rats can find a way to get up into the attic. Or you have palm trees there. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the truth behind it. But... Uh, with that said, yes, we we're we're ha if you if you have a concern and your palm trees are outside the 12 foot level, you could put in a, a ticket in the system. We're happy to provide you a quote to come out and trim those. If you do not want to wait for the uh, the the association to contract with either us or a vendor to do their once a year palm tree trimming, okay? With the treatments for the grass, yes. I, everything that we put down is 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 friendly in the way of, of of pets and things like that. I will say this: we will put not at every house, but we do put signs out. Uh, typically, about every 500 feet, so it works out to be about every uh, three to four homes. There'll be a sign in the front or the back. Any product that we spray, once it's dry, it there's there's uh, it, it cannot harm pets or 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 the uh, or humans to walk. I'm sorry. The last time they sprayed, it was just yeah. Yeah, we we typically put out the little white ones, uh, and like I said, it may not be at your particular home, but you have to look up and down or across the, the way a little. Bit. Okay. All right. That's something that we can address with the with the teams. Sorry, right. one of the, uh, yeah. We, uh, we're testing, we had spots in the pool. What's that? Spots face in the pool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have guards that go down on the sides that, that can do that, for sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow it down to a couple questions because I know everybody wants to get out of here, so I'm going to go two more questions. Uh, I'm going to go to you first, and then you serve back in the back. Okay. Just to be crystal clear, 
under no, the only circumstance you'll put the side down is with, in the common areas. You will not be putting any side down unless we contract you for that service. Likewise in the common areas as well. The, okay. the, the lock pit would be by proposal. All right. Great. And last comment. Um, I did talk to Herman. Um, I don't know. Production what, manager. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. a little, he's a crew chief. Mm -hmm. And I have some yellowing on my driveway where the, the, the weed control spray kind of eat, le uh, eat, Leech. leached. Mm -hmm. So I've got about a seven foot section of yellowish green. Well, again, yellowish you share, uh, or David can take your information but into do, this. Do it. No matter what, David can out. talk to you, but do a work but that's please right. do I would still do a work order, but David can talk to him. said that's what happened. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sir. Uh, I live on Hopefield. I'm on the first house on Hopefield. On the south side of the south side houses, from my house all the way down to the end of the block, there are hedges in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Those hedges are on our property. For the first eight to ten years that I've lived in this house, they were trimmed by the landscaping company. Last four years, they haven't been. Before the hurricane hit, the bushes in my backyard grew to 24 feet tall. I called monthly and complained about it. And they'd say, oh, well, they're too tall. And my comment was, well, if you trim them like you were supposed to, like they always were, they wouldn't be 24 foot tall. Hurricane came through. I was able to cut it back down to a six foot height. Down the earth charged the other people Two to four hundred dollars to trim them in their backyard, even though they were supposed to be doing it in the first place. I know this is a gray area. Um, it's not in this contract. It's in their contract. So I, I'm just just kind of find out. Are all of our bushes have been trimmed? They look very good. The guys did a great job. Those were not trimmed. So I'm trying to find out those, what's going on with those that. Those are part of the contract, and they're in a trim cycle. Okay, that's all I need to know. Not only the whole field, but also. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys very much for coming out today this evening. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Well, well, I, we've oh. got some cards over here by the cookies. If these are a uh, quick QR code to take you straight to the portal. Might be an easy if you'd like to take a card, there's a QR code on it. It'll take you right to the portal. Thank you.